drought, O Lord, upon our sinfulness, then who could stand? But with you there is mercy and forgiveness, and a We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. My sisters and brothers, as we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pause and open our hearts to the healing presence of the Lord. God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Remember your love and your faithfulness, O Lord. Remember your Let us pray. O God, who through your word reconcile the human race to yourself in a wonderful way, grant, we pray, that with prompt devotion and eager faith, the Christian people may hasten toward the solemn celebrations to come. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem, for I have chosen my king from among his sons. As Jesse and his sons came to the sacrifice, Samuel looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is here before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not judge from his appearance or from his lofty stature, because I have rejected him. Not as man sees does God see, because man sees the appearance, but the Lord looks into the heart. 
In the same way, Jesse presented seven sons before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any one of these. Then Samuel asked Jesse, are these all the sons you have? Jesse replied, there is still the youngest who is tending the sheep. Samuel said to Jesse, send for him. We will not begin the sacrificial banquet until he arrives here. Jesse sent and had the young man brought to them. He was ruddy, a youth handsome to behold and making a splendid appearance. The Lord said, there, anoint him, for he is the one. Then Samuel, with the horn of oil in hand, anointed David in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness. Rather, expose them, for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. He spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, 
Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is. But others said, No, he just looks like him. He said, I am. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus had made clay and opened his eyes on a Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a sinful man do such signs? And there was division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him. The one who is speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord. And he worshipped him. The Gospel of the Lord. We have been considering throughout this Lenten season and this journey that we are on, the prayers and the readings of the season inviting us first and foremost not to focus on our sinfulness, but rather on the mercy and the compassion of God. If our focus is inward only, if we're only aware of the things that we have done wrong, if we focus only on what others tell us about what we have done or how bad we are, this focus will not give us any helpful path in order to change or improve our lives. It can only serve to beat us down and perhaps to sink ever more deeply into our own negative thoughts and behaviors. No. The spirituality of Lent does not ask us to begin with ourselves. As always, the church, through its choice of prayers and readings, invites us to focus our attention on God as a God of great love and compassion, a God who is always seeking us out and trying to turn our hearts to God, a God who does not love us based on who we are, but on who God is. And God's love is ever faithful. We hear that over and over again in the scriptures. Even when we are not faithful to God, to ourselves or to one another, God is faithful to us. God became one with us to reveal in our very own flesh the reality of this unconditional love for us, a love that was fully revealed in Jesus' final sacrifice on the cross. If we focus our attention on our God of compassion and mercy, in whose image and likeness we have been made, we will be aware of our sin and our shortcomings. However, we will also have a path 
that can lead us to God's healing and peace. Like the prodigal son, we're called to remember this compassionate love that the Father has for us. And only then can we acknowledge before that God our faults and failings without fear. We can open ourselves up to the God who invites us into his loving embrace and who wants to heal us and make us whole. If we can acknowledge that it is God who invited us into this relationship, God who acts first, even when we are still sinners, then we just might be able to grow in an appreciation of and ultimately in thankfulness for so great a gift and open ourselves ever more fully to the friendship with a God who calls us friends. The first preface of Lent reminds us that this is a joyful season in which we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Paschal mysteries with our minds and hearts renewed. We can only really experience and know that joy if we can see as God sees. This is not easy to do because the world often teaches us to see three things and to experience things through its limited vision. John tells us that as he walked along, Jesus saw a man who was blind. His disciples and others see a sinner who was blind, or one who was blind because of the sin of others. Since his birth, he has been ostracized like all the other sinners of the day. They have nothing to do with him. And notice, the disciples do nothing to help him. They do not serve him in any way. They are conditioned by the times, the common belief that illness is caused by sin. Jesus, on the other hand, sees a brother, a brother in need of healing and compassion. He doesn't try to avoid him. As always, he goes right up to the person in need. He heals the man by making clay from the dust of the earth and his own spittle. He heals him, both for the man himself and as a way to try to get his disciples out of their heads with their mistaken way of thinking and into their hearts. Notice Jesus always prefers service to any convoluted arguments every time he encounters difficult and tragic situations. Notice that for the man cured of physical blindness, his spiritual blindness, excuse me, his spiritual sight develops slowly in three stages. First, he sees Jesus as a man who opened his eyes, then as a prophet, and finally, as the very revelation of God. It's that final revelation that allows him to see himself, not as one to be ostracized and punished in the eyes of God and humanity, but rather as a beloved child of God. This is the truly transformational healing that takes place, and it leads him to being welcomed into the larger community at last. I like to think that for the rest of his life, he spent his time trying to help others who were ostracized know the same love and feeling of belonging that he came to know. It would be an obvious path for him to take, a path that could lead him ever more deeply into that loving embrace of the Lord. And I believe that as we experience that same conversion in our lives, it is the obvious path that we must take as well. The sight that faith brings to him develops slowly. I find great hope in that. I pray that our faith might continue to grow and mature over the course of our lifetime. I pray that the older we get, the better we might actually see, especially the good that we might have overlooked in ourselves and in others. 
I pray that we can grow to see ourselves as beloved daughters and sons of God. I pray that as the disciples eventually learned to see others compassionately, as their eyes of faith matured, that we might continue to reach out to one another and bring that peace and compassion of the Lord and that sense of community to them. And I pray that as we do that, we might know great joy and peace in that sharing. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, one substantial with the Father, Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And of his kingdom there will be no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I believe... I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection and the life of the world to come. Amen. Jesus saw and responded to suffering. Let us lift up in prayer, the needs that we recognize in our world today. A response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church always bring light to whatever is hidden in darkness. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. That world leaders have their eyes opened to compassionate, and healing responses to the COVID-19 crisis. We pray that Kelly, Patty, and Bill may continue to open their hearts to God and grow more deeply in faith as they make move closer to receiving the Easter sacraments. We pray. that any who are separated from our community today be held in prayer, such as the ill, the isolated, medical personnel, and our military personnel and first responders. We pray. For all who have died, that they might rest in the loving and healing embrace of the Lord. We pray. Before those silent prayers, we hold deep within our hearts. We 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all healing, you sent your Son into our world as light. May he illuminate our way this Lent and always. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and the glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's children. We place before you with joy these offerings, which bring eternal remedy, O Lord, praying that we may both faithfully revere them and present them to you as is fitting for the salvation of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out and without end acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself 
so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Edward the Confessor, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Howard, our Bishop Emeritus, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of the family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, in him, 
O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us extend to one another the offer of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of our world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. O oh God, who enlighten everyone who comes into this world, illuminate our hearts, we pray, with the splendor of your grace, that we may always ponder what is worthy and pleasing to your majesty and love you in all sincerity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. And let us go in peace. Thank you.